Hello, it is Wicked Eraser from Roblox. I will be teaching you today how to script a kill brick on Roblox, and I will be explaining the basics of scripting doing so as well. So, what you want to do first is start menu Roblox Studio, open up your Roblox Studio, and um, as with a lot of things, this is more more so to do with practice. The, the more you work on your scripting and building, the better you will get. So if you have a hard time at first, don't worry. We all started there. So let's see. Now that you're in Roblox Studio, what you'll want to do is create a new place. So on the top uh, left, click the new button. It looks like a piece of paper. That's gonna be well. That's gonna be opening. All right. Now, I think the starting layup is like this. So what you'll want to do is insert basic objects, put it on the side. Well, this is just my layout. You can do whatever you want, but this is it'll be easier to follow if you do it like I do. So put basic objects on the side here. If you don't know how to slide, you can just you just slide it over like that. So put it on the left side. And um, insert objects from web. And then take that and slide it on top. See? Now you can change with tabs on the bottom here. So it's gonna stay on let's stay on basic objects. On this side you just have the explorer right here. Under that the properties. Alright, so if your if your studio is laid out like I am you should be fine. Ignore these. These are my plugins. You won't need these. So, but everything here you should have, just like me. All right. So let's let's begin. So let's say you want to make an obby, an obstacle course, and you want a lava kill brick to kill the player. So what you'll first want to do is double click on a part, and now you you see you will have just inserted a part. Now with this part, let's make all the sides smooth using the smooth surface tool which is located right here okay so now that every single surface is smooth which is the way I like to keep it let's anchor it because right now if you play the game this will just fall down so you see how when I put it over this block there's a little uh, circle with a cross through it that means it's anchored so put it over the block and the circle should go away that means it's not anchored so click it now it's anchored so now, when you play the game, this will not fall down. Alright, so, just for a little, it's a lava brick, so it should be red, right? So, click on the brick. There's two ways you can change the color. You can click on the paint bucket, choose the red color, and click it. Or, instead of doing that, you can uh, click on the brick, go to your properties panel, find brick color, which should be at the top. Click on that, change that to really red. Okay. So here we have our lava brick. Alright. So click on the lava brick. So now anything that you insert into the game will be inserted inside of this brick. Now, right here on the explorer is a hierarchy of the game. It goes, uh, every single object in here is connected to the game. And this is the workspace part of the game. Inside of the workspace, there's a terrain, camera, base plate, and all the parts, everything you can touch. So, the part is inside of the workspace, so let's click on the part. Now let's double click on script to insert a script. And now, as you can see, the script was inserted inside of the part. Alright. So now let's go into the script. Alright. Now when you're scripting, and you want to reference something, Let's say you want to reference a part. Um, the way you would do it is you would go down the hierarchy of the game uh, piece by piece, separating each by dots. For example, let's say we want to get to this part. We can go to game, which is the first part of the hierarchy, dot to go to the next one. Then, as you can see, it's a workspace with a capital W. So keep the W capital here. 
Uh, capitalization is very important when you're scripting. So now that you have this workspace, now next next in the hierarchy is the part. So we'll click on part. Okay. Now we can set this to a variable. Uh, let's say a equals. So now every single time you type the letter a, it will be the same as if you're typing game dot workspace dot part. A is the same as that because you set it equal to. The equal sign can be used to change things as such. So now the letter A, according to this particular script, is equal to game.workspace.part. So let's say we want to change, let's say we want to make it so when the part is touched, it will connect a function. All right, so let's, let's make some lines. So say A dot touched. Uh, connect uh, uh, on touch. There we go. So what this is saying right here with this line is when the game that workspace that part, which is your part right here, is touched. Touched is a event property, which means it will trigger. It will send out a connection each time you touch it. That means that when that is touched then it will connect a function named on touch. We didn't create the function yet. Now let's create the function. Function on touch. Alright. Alright, now way the way this works is function, when you type in the word function, and then you type in the name of the function afterwards, along with two parentheses to close it, and then each function needs an end in order to complete it. A function is just a line of code you can reuse. Alright. So now that you have this, let's see. All right. Let's type the letter A here. A will be no. We already have A as a variable here, so let's use let's use B. So when this connects to this function, it will send a uh, a variable into the parentheses. So the variable it will send is the object that touched it. So the the variable b here will be the same as the the part that touched this brick. So now what we want to do is we want to check if the thing that touched it is actually a person. So the way we will do this we will put an if statement. So if b dot parent Find first child humanoid. Pay attention to my spelling because it is important. Then b dot parent dot humanoid dot health dot value equals. Let's copy this. B dot parent dot humanoid dot dot value minus. Uh, let's say if you touch it, it does a hundred damage, so instant death. I click and type another end because if statements need ends too. All right, so let's let's go over how this should work. All right, a equals game dot workspace dot part. That means that every time you say a, it will be the same as game dot workspace dot part. That's a hierarchy. That's how it works. Then function that creates a new function. The function name is on touch. You can make this anything you want, as long as you reference it. So let's say if I change the word to the function name to poo, this would need to be changed to poo too. All right. So anything involving that has to be changed. And then in here is a variable that is sent to the function by the trigger. So the variable b, which is equal to the brick that touches the brick you're referencing. So then now we're saying if the brick that hit us, um, if its parent has a humanoid in it, that means that if the object, the brick that touched you, is inside of an object that has a humanoid, which is which is recognized as a player, then continue. If it is false, though, it will completely ignore this line of code here. So now let's look to this line. So let's say a person touches it. B that parent that humanoid that health that value. That means um, the brick, its parent, the humanoid, the humanoid, this health is a value of the humanoid. If you change that, it changes the health of your character. So now we set that 
to itself and then subtract by however much you want. You have to set it to itself and then subtract, otherwise it can cause issues. Now the if statement is over, so we can put an end for the if statement and an end for the function. Okay? And now the connection line a dot touched connect. That means that game dot workspace dot part dot touched, which is a property of the part. Each object in Roblox has its own properties. Touched is part of the parts properties. So when it's touched, it connects to the function called poo. So what that does is the script looks for a function called poo, finds it right here, and connects it. And now a touched connection sends in a variable for the part that touched it. So that's where we get B from. So now if we go to place one, click tools, test, place solo, we can test this out and see how it works. Go faster. Come on. Don't be shy. Alright, here we go. Yep. Sometimes it takes a bit to open. Now a really good tool you should use in case your script has, has an error is go to view output window and put it on the bottom here. And now if there's any errors, it will show your script's name in red letters and it will tell you the error. These, the ones in red letters, letters here are not my script. It will name the script. So if your script is named script, it will tell you here and it will show you the hierarchy so you know for sure it's that exact script. So according to what we did, when we touch this, we should die. And we had an error. So you see here it says workspace.part.script line six attempt to index field health a number value. Okay. I am stupid. Health itself is a number value. You don't have to put that value. So let's take that off. Take off the dot value. My fault. So now let's go to tools, test, play solo. Try that again. Come on, Roblox. Go faster. All right. Now let's open the output again so if it errors again, we'll know what caused it. And as you can see, you have a successful lava brick. Thank you for watching.